know, so we had set them up where we went to lunch and came back, and our scouts are talking about. He said, "Yeah, we've got this this, this catcher. Uh, we make up the school, but it's uh, <clears throat> like midweek guy, like doesn't hit good pitching. We don't know if he can catch or not. And so we, he's like, oh, I'm gonna see who this guy is. We start playing his video in the area. <laughs> Had a few choice words for him. <laughs> He's wonderful, wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys do with your your reports, scouting. You know, I heard that they knew that he was going to be an awesome player and a great hitter, and then I, I saw him develop. There, there came a point in Tennessee where, about two weeks into the season, I realized he was better than most left-handed big league hitters. So. I just hope that we could win the first half with him because I knew that eventually he would get called up, and that's what happened. And it really hasn't gone back down since. A little bit, but it came right back up. All right, let's take some questions. We'll start right here. Um, hi, um, my name is Sam. I'm from uh, New York City. Um, my question is, uh, how does uh, your internal um, prospect rankings uh, differ from those that are available to the public in places like MLB.com or Baseball America? Um, and what types of things do you look at that um, public uh, ones don't look at? Yeah, I think uh, internally we, we rank our players based on, um, you know, we've seen these players since they came into the system, some of them 16 years old in the Dominican or Venezuela. Uh, so we get to know these kids. Uh, we know their makeup, we know their heart, we know their passion and their desire, and that factors into where we have these guys ranked. Um, a lot of publications get information from us about who we like, but we have a better feel for these players. We see the upside. We see where they're going to be you know, five years from after they sign. So we have a little different feel for them. We know the guys who have the makeup that's going to allow them to over exceed, and we know those guys who are uh, maybe going to hurt themselves with their development. So I think we factor all those things into our, our internal rankings. And, Every one of us on this panel right now will have guys ranked in completely different orders. It's just part of the, the business and it's, it's part of what we believe in. And Jason and Theo Jed, they do a really good job of polling everyone in the system to find out how we like our players so that we have a, a really comprehensive look of what our guys are. Thank you. Let's go to the back. So let's talk about a specific one. One of your top prospects is Ian Happ. He scores well on the kind of prospect publications that have just been discussed, and yet I have a feeling that he's actually a little underrated. So I wondered what uh, the Cubs are looking for from Ian Happ and when they think he'll be in the majors. And by the way, Nick, you just saw him firsthand. If you want to chime in too, please do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, with Ian, he went out and, and had such great success early on, um, which we we expected when he was in uh, in Myrtle. I, we felt that he was such an advanced college hitter coming out of the draft that year. Uh, the, the most important thing for Ian was to really allow him the opportunity to settle in at one position defensively. Um, all through college, um, in his summer collegiate days, he, he played multiple positions shortstop center field. Uh, it was one of the things we liked about him as a player, his versatility. But at the same time, we thought um, it was in his best interest to be able to settle in in his first full season in the minor leagues, to really sink his teeth in on one position, feel comfortable, um, and really get into a good routine. But at the same time, still expose him a little bit to the outfield because we do, we do believe his versatility can really impact our major league roster in the coming years. Um, I think Ian had to, for the first time, really learn how to manage, you know, his body. He was always, you know, really in good shape and, and took care of it. But that first, the first experience and taste of a long full season um, can really beat you up. And I think at the end of the year, he did get a little bit tired. And I think we saw that a little bit in the fall league. Uh, and just hearing some of the feedback from the instructors and from the, the strength and conditioning guys, like he really embraced that challenge coming into 2017. I think we're really all really excited to see him um, really develop um, the type of player he's going to be, become, whether it's, you know, in 2017 on a major league roster at some point or, you know, 18 uh, moving forward. But an uh, exciting player can do a lot of things on the field, switch it over power, and really controls his own. So I think we all have high hopes for 2017 season for, for him. Yeah. 
Yeah, and on top of that, he's another great guy. I mean, you, you see Chris Bryant and Kyle Schwarber and, and then Tommy Baez, all these guys that have come through the system. He fits that mold. Um, and I agree, I saw the same thing. He was great at the beginning when he joined the Smokies. I, he had the, the best debut I've ever seen. I think it was like 11 for 16 in his first series. But for him, it was the most games he's ever played. You go to college, he's in college the year before, and then a little bit of pro ball. And you, you're, you're talking maybe 100 games, probably less than that. You know, college schedule is like 50. Minor leagues, it's 140 games. Tack on the spring training, it's month there. And then, you know, for him, the fall league. So with a lot of our players, not just him, that even, even the Chris Bryant's in the world, that's one of the biggest adjustments that those guys have is just how to manage the fatigue of playing 142, 162 games. Now the Cubs are playing into the, you know, the 180 game range, which is great. So um, I think you're right. I think he's going to be a, an awesome player. Uh, you, can, he, you can never have enough switch hitters. All right, right. Yes, my, my name is Joy from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, I'm a high school teacher, and I've been a coach fan my whole life, and it's so great to see the organization filled the right way, it seems like, instead of just trying to buy and hope for the best. Um, my question is, David Price went to our high school, and so obviously we, we have seen some of that, but as a high school teacher, it's interesting, do you have plans as far as how do you help these young men that are now getting these contracts and fame and fortune, are there things that you do specifically 